Hi, I'm uh, Luke Malks. I'm the Director of Business Development at uh, Brave Software, um, and I'm going to talk today about what we're doing at Brave on and the importance of kind of bridging Web 2 with Web 3 with usability and privacy by default. Um, and, you know, we all know why Web 3, but, you know, the mainstream and, and businesses and, and users and people basically, you know, or don't understand what Web3 is or, or why it's needed. But, um, you know, I, I think it's good to take a take a minute and, and kind of zoom out a little bit and look at kind of why these changes that Web3 brings are so fundamental and important um, for all the projects that we work on and, and use in, in our daily lives, but why they're also important for, uh, you know, everyday consumers and people that use the web. Um, you know, the internet's very, over the past 10 or so years, it's kind of gone from being this really open uh, uh, web to the internet of Google and a small handful of others. And, uh, you know, they've done that through a set of strategic moves in the, you know, early mid 2000s um, to one, bring browsers and uh, bring operating systems to market um, that can be dominant and easy to use and global and uh, inexpensive. And um, then also, you know, looking at the media channels. So uh, purchasing YouTube and going after monetization for those channels. So if you look at, you know, the Google buying double click and Google buying ad meld, in my opinion, are the two biggest moves that they made to uh, hyper drive programmatic advertising and in the way that publishers and businesses monetize on the web today. Um, you know, as a result, uh, Google now has 74% of the mobile operating system market with Android and 92% of global search revenue uh, search engine market share um, and makes a significant amount, uh, you know, as one of, you know, three or four companies that basically runs all the advertising online. Um, and with that, with that transition, you know, to these big tech companies coming in, uh, you know, you've seen them pivot from when they're growing uh, and, and, and privacy is less of a concern, uh, you know, in 2016, Google went and changed their uh, APIs and, and removed that final barrier between, you know, users, uh, advertising data and service data, um, which really allowed much more personal data collection and more personal matching across different services. Um, and then you see how the shift changes to where last year Google puts out their blog saying that privacy is paramount to us, you know, in everything we do, which is which is great for Google to say, it's a different thing in practice. Um, and it's not just Google, uh, Facebook too, right? Like 2010, they came out and said Zuckerberg was famously quoted as saying, you know, privacy is no longer a social norm. And we've seen how that panned out in 2019 and, uh, and this year as well. Um, and now it seems like everybody's talking about privacy, uh, all, all of big tech. And it really kind of brings an important question to the surface of like, what does privacy mean for people? And, and what does data mean? Because mainstream users don't really understand data or the fact that it's their data, um, but they see the word data thrown around all the time. And they see these kind of abstract concepts uh, kind of put out in the zeitgeist. And, uh, and they, some, some companies feel like you really have to go to like a really uh, nth degree of explaining these things. And most of the smart ones just realize that good privacy should just work. Um, and with Brave, our approach has basically been that, you know, in order to create a better web and, and a new internet for people, um, you have to take it the position of having privacy first and putting people first. And that means, you know, um, uh, <laughs> That means looking at the possibilities that Web3 brings and, and how we all kind of want to see people kind of become their own personal bank. Um, but the challenge that comes with that is that it's not that easy to use. And also, once we, we get past that early, early adopter phase, um, the challenge is that the market is very used to uh, this idea that, you know, um, we have to protect ourselves and, and have insurance, et cetera, things that are very, uh, you know, kind of counter to the way that we currently use blockchain technology, where, you know, you measure twice, transact once, uh, don't, you know, always that, that kind of the extra layer of diligence required just to make transactions and, and make sure that you're not sending it to the wrong place or <laughs> burning things, uh, don't send it back to the original contract address, <laughs> things like that. Um, you know, so how do you kind of bridge this gap? Um, and, and how do you how do you communicate the value 
that that Web3 brings to a mainstream audience that and not just users, but also businesses that have been sacrificing privacy in the name of convenience and uh, and efficiency and uh, revenue for, you know, conditioned to do that for you know over a decade. Um, and the thing that we really kind of quickly grasped, uh, you know, as we went to market with Brave, uh, you know, a browser that kind of has blockchain technology integrated into it is that you really have to make it easy. Um, you have to make it really easy for people because those are the people that are trying it out first. And you got to make it really easy for businesses um, because I think that this both get these things both get lost uh, uh, within the blockchain space. Um, but, you know, that means that, you know, taking the values of web two and, and differentiating from them uh, uh, with the values of web three, right? And, and that means basically like going from conditions where people have to opt out from having their privacy invaded um, and, and their data collected and you know uh, profited from um, to one where people can opt in to be a collaborator with web three, um, which is a, a fundamental shift. Um, and you go from a, a, a method of extraction to uh, participation and uh, an environment of collections to one where people are getting rewarded. And these are things that's like very key when you're talking to mainstream audiences, everyday people, we all know, like, uh, you know, talking to your, your spouse or your family members about this stuff, it's the uh, eye glaze is almost instant, right? Uh, and so it's really key to find those keywords that people can connect with and use them towards driving value uh, with the message. Um, and even simpler, right? Like, bringing privacy to, to someone's, you know, radar means just kind of reminding them that they have window shades on their windows and you wouldn't want to have your lights on in your room at night with your window without the window shade down. Right. Like, and it's kind of like taking that idea and, and saying like, look, when you browse the web um, and, and you're not protecting your privacy these days, uh, you're essentially doing just that. You're opening your window up for anybody to see um, everywhere you go uh, from your internet provider um, to the businesses and the publishers that you transact with or, or uh, it, you know, consume content through um, and, and the platforms and uh, service providers that you use for email and other services that you need and are required to, um, you know, live online. Um, and in other principles too, right? Like you lock your doors, like security is important and, um, and, and making sure that, you know, when you're working in this blockchain space or when you're, you know, transacting in this space that you're doing so from a solid foundation where, you know, there's high integrity and because there is that added level of responsibility, um, especially if you're using, you know, cold storage that, that you really get these, these concepts across where, you know, by bringing it down to basics. And usually when you do that, people understand and, and can get a grip of it. And and the, the real sticking point with us was to just remind people that they're not a product, right? Like if it, the way that they're monetized now on the internet with the way that advertising is gone, they've turned people into products and it's gone away from focusing on matching something to somebody that's relevant on a page or context to following that person around and, and you know, never incentivizing that data collection and then, you know, showing something that's maybe relevant, maybe not. Um, I think it's debatable uh, and, you know, leaving them out of that whole value exchange. Um, and, and the end user ends up getting a slower experience where, uh, you know, they are losing more and more of their privacy and uh, it impacts battery life data. And so what Brave does is basically blocks anything that would collect a user's data by from a third party without them knowing about it. So any call that happens in the background that is used to, to collect data, um, everything from third party advertising requests to trackers and, and other, uh, other bits that people don't see that slow down the experience. And when you do that, just by virtue of just blocking things that are tracking you uh, as you browse, you see an uptick in performance. And it's one of the, the main factors around having a three times, three X speed performance um, uh, advantage over our competitors is the fact that we're just blocking the noise and we're blocking a lot of that engine that happens in the background that you, you don't see, but is there um, as an end user that you're kind of taxed with. Um, and so, um, you know, it also means while you communicate to the, the, the mainstream and to businesses about the values in, in very simple terms, it means that you build the protocols into the browser, into the product that you need to make sure that you're 
preparing for Web3, right? And so that's one of the things that we've really been putting a lot of focus on. And it, it's quieter work and it happens uh, in the background, but get everything set up to where it is easy for businesses and people that want to plug in to plug in um, and, and start with that early cohort and, and take all of their feedback and be open with development, et cetera. And so that's kind of what we're doing and, and being able to say, hey, I want to load Web3 by default <laughs> when the browser starts, or you know, I have this option to use IPFS if I want for things. It's just really, at a, at a fundamental level in the settings in the browser, it, it, it's very important for you know, kind of bridging this gap. And then for people, um, you know, browsers apply to everybody, right? Like your your um, young, old, uh, advanced, new. Uh, intermediary. Um, and so what we've done is try to really with the crypto side of things, because we have our basic attention token and it's a native token in our browser, that's an ERC 20 token and kind of as a unit of account for people's attention. Um, explain that in, in, in simple terms to somebody at the other side of a business meeting or to a friend is kind of, you know, eye glazing. And so what we've done is kind of start with two tracks. One is, you know, this brave rewards track where, we talk about, you know, the rewards element as a token or kind of like a frequent fire mile or a reward point for browsing. And then having this advanced track with uh, an integrated Web3 wallet so that, you know, not people that aren't necessarily into our token, you know, or, you know, developers and other, other pioneers in this space can have a secure browser that they can develop with and that enthusiasts can also um, have an experience that's more advanced that they wanted and can take advantage of these things without having to worry about rolling the dice at an extension store that might end up giving them the wrong extension um, or uh, so you got to really make it easy for people um, and you've got to really make it easy for business. And the key thing for us with businesses has been able, has been to one, make sure that we're working, you know, in a regulatory compliant manner with on ramps and off ramps. Businesses are used to uh, receiving, you know, direct deposits or, or ACH um, and keeping it simple, keeping, they do not have time to implement things uh, if it's not bringing them revenue or if it's not showing them exactly how you can one-to-one -one beat their revenue. So ease of use and keeping it simple is absolutely key. Um, so uh, one thing with us is, you know, communicating the value with having your data on your device uh, is, is important for both businesses and for individuals. Um, and that's the thing area where, you know, blockchain technology and Brave both are uh, innovating in that, you know, your user's data, stays on your device, um, how can you rework existing, you know, monetization streams or, or create new ones that uh, can operate from the edge, from the client um, and keep their data on their device without, you know, having to require intermediaries between every action you're doing that are collecting your data without you knowing it. Um, and then also, you know, making sure that opt-in element's there so that you can go to a business and say, hey, look, you know, uh, it, it, it might be an opt-in thing, but you're getting an entire audience of people that want what you're serving them um, as opposed to, you know, think about advertising in the web outside of what we're doing. And it's, it's, you're bombarded with ads and it's just kind of an, an opt out thing. Um, and then also delivering people dashboards and, and, and data visualization and, and kind of bridging that gap uh, to show them something that they're familiar with. It's super key and it's really important for businesses. Um, and, you know, transparency is another area where the blockchain space leads by far um, over traditional uh, centralized systems where, you know, just in, in the fact that you're giving people that added level of transparency, um, especially in something like advertising, where it's notoriously a black box, um, you know, it, 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 it's a huge differentiator. Um, and it's also something that becomes a really great tool for people that are evangelizing uh, adoption and, and use of the product because they can go and say, look, you know, you, you can check out what they're doing. Um, the code's auditable and they're putting up data about the utility that's happening in the platform. Um, so, you know, this has been working out well for us. Uh, as of this last month, we've reached over 19 million monthly active users and 4.9 million daily active users. And again, I think, you know, 
you, you might see some criticism or, or flack around having, you know, a more cautious or, or pragmatic approach to these things. But if you can go about it in a way that is compliant and uh, communicates the rewards well, um, you create an opportunity where as more of these advanced features and these, uh, you know, technologies mature, you can switch them on to a much wider market than you could otherwise, because this space is inherently complex and tricky for even people that are advanced and to fully understand. Um, so, uh, and, and we've also brought in like over 900,000 uh, content creators to accept the token. So it, there's a huge interest in crypto, there's huge interest in privacy and, uh, you know, communicating the value between, you know, just taking it back to basics, making it simple for people um, and, and, you know, remembering why you're doing this and, and translating that to people in a way that they can understand is so critical um, for both businesses and for uh, people. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that wraps it up. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, if you ever are interested in reaching out, just uh, look at brave.com. Thank you.